y a si longtemps déjà J'ai oublié comment Tant de mots, de moments Pensés depuis longtemps Devant ce mur muet Faut chercher autrement and welcome to the Knitting with Cat Hair podcast. My name is Nikki. I'm also known as Knitting with Cat Hair on Instagram and Cat Hair Knitting on Ravelry. I'm coming to you from Sudbury, Ontario, Canada, which lies atop the traditional lands of the uh, Atigamishing and Anishinaabek people. Um, yeah, so this is primarily a knitting podcast. However, sometimes I talk about some of the other crafts I'm getting into, such as cross stitch and crochet. Uh, if you are a new viewer, welcome, a big warm welcome. And if you're a returning viewer, a big welcome back. Um, I hope everyone is doing well. It has been three weeks since my last podcast. And um, yeah, I just, I hope everyone's doing well. And um, wherever you are, you're, you're able to enjoy some sunshine. Today is a pretty gloomy day. That's why I'm filming in the craft room today. Um, I was hoping to get outside, but it just started raining on me. So and we're expecting some thunder, thunder showers later. So it just didn't seem like a great idea. So unfortunately we're inside, but I hope you're enjoying some sun where you are. All right, so just uh, one admin thing up front before we get into the crafting talk. Uh, yeah, so we still have our Around the World Make Along running. Um, we're in the second trimester. It's four months long. It started on May 1st and it runs till the end of August, I believe. Yes. Um, and this time around we're knitting with and using patterns from um, the Eastern Hemisphere. Yeah. So you're more than welcome to join in. Like I mentioned, uh, we have the Knitting with Cat Hair podcast group on Ravelry and all of the details can be found there. And we already have quite a few uh, lovely finished objects. So as I've done in, in other podcast episodes, I think what I'll do is I'll put a slideshow at the end of the podcast uh, to showcase some of these lovely makes. So um, with that, I think we can move into the, the knitting talk. So I, I'll talk about what I'm wearing first. I am wearing the Veer T, which is a pattern by We Are Knitters. I knitted up last year. Um, it is, it was a kit. I said knit. It's actually crocheted. Yes, it's a crochet top. It's my first and only to this day um, crocheted garment. So yeah, it's it was a super beginner crochet pattern, uh, similar to the threadbare top that I showed last podcast. Um, you simply kind of make two identical panels and then just this one, you don't even have to pick up any stitches. You literally just seam up the sides and the shoulders. And there's your top. So yeah, I, I uh, crocheted it up out of Pima cotton, which is by We Are Knitters, as I mentioned, it was a kit. So yeah, you can find out more details on my Ravelry page if you're interested. And everything I talk about in the podcast episode will be linked down below. Okay, so I don't have any finished objects for you today, unfortunately. Um, I've kind of been spreading the love around. <laughs> I have four active whips right now and yeah, I've been trying to kind of devote a bit of time to each of them, which of course is resulting in no finished objects, um, but that's okay. So I will start with, I'll start with my ranunculus, which I am knitting up as part of our Around the World Make Along. So, sorry, first it's housed in this adorable little fox bag by My Needle Crafts. And um, the pattern is by Midori Hirose. I'm sure um, most of you are very familiar with this pattern. It's a lovely pattern. So this is the second time I've, I'm knitting it. I am knitting, um, my plan is to do a version for each season. So I've already done a summer version, which hopefully I'll wear actually on the next episode so you can see what it looks like. I still have to wash and block it, <laughs> full disclosure. Um, yeah, so this is my, I'm just trying to find the front. I think this is the front here. Yes, this is my ranunculus. 
this little progress keeper here shows you where I was last time. So I made quite a bit of progress. I've separated for the sleeves now. I've finished all of the, um, the pattern work essentially. So there's some textured stitches at the top and then some lovely little lace and then more textured stitches. And now I'm literally just um, knitting in the round stockinette. So it shouldn't be much longer. I've decided to go with short sleeves for this version. So this is my spring version. I don't know if I mentioned that. But yeah, I hummed and hawed about it. And I think because I'm going to be making a fall and a winter version, and those are obviously going to need long sleeves, I think it's, it makes most sense to do a short sleeve version. So it won't be much longer now. Literally just have to finish the bodding and, and do some ribbing at the bottom. Yeah, so I'm really enjoying it. And um, what did I want to say about it? I, this time around, so the original... My original summer ranunculus, I followed the directions that Midori Hayrose came out with for the larger bust. Kind of like a, there's like a secondary pattern that you basically follow if you want to make it for larger bust sizes. I guess that's the best way to explain it. Um, so this time around, and that one, I, as I explained, I think last time that it came out a little larger than I expected in the chest and I have not washed and blocked it yet and I'm concerned that it's going to be very large. So this time around I'm not following those directions and I'm just following the uh, the main pattern which is kind of like a one size fits all. Um, the way that you can make it different sizes is by using different needle sizes or different yarn weights or a combination thereof. So uh, so I'm just going to follow the pattern along and um, hopefully <laughs> Hopefully it works out. I think I tried it on and I believe it fits. I'm trying to remember if I did try it on. Yes, I did. Yeah, so I think we're good. We're good. And so um, the yarn that I'm using for this is a combination <laughs> of, I think you can probably tell there's some mohair in there as well. So I'll just show you the two cakes. These are by Small Bird Workshop. So this is an interesting blend of um, plant fibers. So there's metal, silk, linen, and cotton in this. And then I'm pairing it with a lovely mohair, which is a, a silk mohair blend. And it's, um, yeah, it's creating, I really like how the gray kind of pairs down the, the pink and it almost makes it look, I don't know if it's showing up on camera, but it's almost like a purple. Yeah, it just uh, subtly pairs it down and adds that variation, variegation, I should say, throughout. I really enjoy it. So yeah, that's what I'm knitting it up out of. Oh, and I don't know if I if you saw these. Because <laughs> I think I mentioned on a, a previous podcast episode that I was always losing my stitches. They were falling off my needles and I needed to invest in needle st stitch stoppers, whatever they're called. They're called stitch stoppers. Um, yeah, so I made my own. <laughs> you could totally guess where that came from. <laughs> so all you wine drinkers out there, all you need is a cork. <laughs> and it seems to be doing the trick. So um, yeah, I've created a couple of them. <laughs> I just think they're fun. And, they're, and they work, they're practical. So yeah, that's my ranunculus. It probably um, won't be much longer before I'm finished it. Especially since it's like just knitting in the round stockinette. All right, that's my first whip. My next whip, I picked up my Talia. That's housed in a beautifully naturally hand dyed bag by Natural U. This is a, it's a big bag. <laughs> it's a beast of a bag. It's perfect for sweaters. Okay, so. Um, I put a little progress keeper here, my little mushroom. That's where I was last time. I know it's nothing super exciting here because it's just the body. Um, but I did finish the, um, the waist shaping and then I knit, um, then you just knit stockinette for a bit in the round. And now I'm actually doing the increases for the bust. So I'm getting there, getting there. Sorry, this one's really hard to show because it just, it wants to roll all the time. 
So it's uh, obviously a bottom up sweater knit in the round. The pattern is, so I said, it's Talia. It's by Jennifer Steingas. And I am using Let Lopey for this. So I have four colors. Uh, the bottom is called Celery Heather. Um, the rust color is called Rust Heather. There's some yellowy green in the middle called Golden Heather. And then the main body is called Straw, I believe. So yeah, I, um, really enjoying it. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just really enjoying all my knits right now. Honestly, I just I'm loving it. So yeah, that's the body. And for those who are new, I'd already finished the sleeves before. So I'll just show you what they look like. I have two of them. Obviously I've done both. I knit them two at a time, which was my first time doing that for sleeves. And it, I would totally do that again. Anytime. It just made it so much easier because I didn't have to, um, like I knew they were going to be the exact same. So it has the same color work at the bottom on the cuffs. So yeah, I feel like I'm getting there. This one will be done for fall for sure. And what else? I am making the size G in this. So I have, like just for reference, I have a 45 inch bust and I think this one gives me 49 inches. So about four inches of posit positive ease, I believe. Okay, I'm moving on to my next whip. Housed in another little bag by My Needle Crafts. This is their B bag. I typically say this every episode, but I'm not sponsored by anybody. I just tell you what I like. I love this bag. This is for two at a time sock knitting. And you can see that there's a divider, which is also a little notions pouch put your little notions in there and then um, you can put you know your balls of yarn on e either side for two at a time sock knitting and I am doing two at a time sock knitting for oh just a sec my pencil stuck on my yarn there we go for the uh, candle flame socks by Mona Schmidt so actually I didn't make a ton of progress on this I think I'm on I am on the heel now. So I'm just doing the slip stitch heel right now. These are a pattern from the lovely 52 weeks of socks. Actually, I'll just pop in a picture. It's just so much easier than trying to show you the picture in the book, but I'll pop in a picture so you can see what the finished um, socks look like. They're very pretty. Um, yeah. So this is the front and then the back is all textured. So I am knitting this up out of, uh, sorry, Sweet Skein of Mine yarn. Sweet Skein of Mine. This is her High Twist BFL. So it's an 80% superwash BFL, 20% nylon. And the colorway is called Blush. It's this lovely, really pale, peachy color, which I just think is so pretty. So yeah, those are my socks. Um, okay, and then one more whip. Wow, I'm just whipping through the whips today. <laughs> So yeah, um, last podcast episode, I showed you my swatch for the Himlebi shawl, which is a shawl pattern by Larka of Fiber Tales. And I was starting to knit that up in Knit Picks Simply Wool. It was like 100% wool. Um, I didn't have enough of one color, so I was going to do a fade. Well, it turns out that it took way more yarn than I expected. And I quickly realized that I wasn't going to have enough to, to even fade. Like I wanted, my intention was to get through the B pattern and the lace, um, yeah, there's like some flower lace, get through that in one color. Um, cause I didn't want to start fading in 
the pattern. I just didn't think it would look nice and I couldn't make it through that with one skein of yarn. So I have ripped it out and started again. And this time I am using, I'll show you the yarn I'm using. It's by Roots and Rain. They're um, a Canadian Canadian yarn dyer. She does natural dyed yarns and she actually, it's pretty cool because she actually use her water comes from rainwater. Like she's, she tries to be very environmentally conscious about that type of stuff. And so I think that is fantastic. So it says right on the label, small batch, naturally hand dyed using rainwater. And the colorway I'm using is called Goldenrod and Eastern Brazil Wood. It's a tin roof single, 100% superwash merino fingering weight. Um, but you get quite a bit of yardage on these. Almost, uh, I'll show you here. This is the color I'm using. You get almost 500 yards per skein. So it's pretty, pretty good yardage for sure. Okay, so. I am making the Hunlebi shawl with this. I'm holding the yarn double. Well, you can see I have finished the bees all along. <laughs> They're so cute. And um, yeah, I'm just moving into the lace flower part. So it's pretty cute. I have this little bee. Progress Keeper. And um, what was I going to say about this? Okay, so deviations from the pattern. So instead, the pattern calls for DK weight. I'm using two strands of fingering weight held, obviously held double. Um, and for the bees, I made them bigger. So I don't want to give away the pattern, but um, if you purchase it, you'll understand what I mean. <laughs> So I made them bigger and I just wanted them to look like fluffier and just stand out a little more. So yeah, those are the only two modifications and yeah, I'm enjoying it. It's nice. Uh, the color is pretty. It's more summery, I think too. The one I was doing was um, originally was a dark, like a dark brown to a lighter brown and it, it was very pretty. Like it would have been very pretty if I could have pulled it off, but um, it was also heavier and darker and this one's more summery and it's kind of fitting with the bees. So yeah, that is my final work in progress. Um, yep, yeah, so moving to acquisitions. So on my last episode, I mentioned that I was really interested in trying out the New Tedon yarn. And they were doing a I think it was that day. Yes, that day there was um, a sale, a shop update. So um, yeah, so just so you know, I managed to get some. I'll show you what it is and then I'll go into how I managed to get it because I know a lot of people really struggled. Um, and I'm not saying this is gonna guarantee that you'll get some, but this is what I did to make sure that I got some. Um, yeah, so this this is I'm going to put the word or the names down below because I can't remember them and I'm not very good at pronouncing them. So here's one. <laughs> and I find that firstly, the colors change depending on what light you look at it in. It um sometimes it looks more green, sometimes it looks more blue. There's speckles of purple in here. Like it's just an amazing, amazing yarn and no picture really does it justice. You have to actually see it in person. So for those who don't know, this new Tiden yarn is actually an unspun Swedish, Swedish fiber. So um, the recommendation is to knit it. I don't know if you can see that. to knit it double, like held double, um, because it's very delicate. It breaks super easily. Like I'm not gonna do it because I, 
I don't want to start breaking it into pieces. I know that's going to be a bit stressful on me as well. Um, <laughs> but if I pull on it, it will literally just pull apart. So the recommendation is to knit it double or to hold it with some mohair to kind of provide a bit of strength. So yeah, that's one color that I got. And then I got a second color and I got sweaters quantities of both. This is the second color. It's gorgeous, like honey yellow. Um, so what else can I say about the yarn? It's, it's beautiful. Um, yeah, so it comes from, I'm going to try and pronounce their name. Uh, the company's name is, is Anna Akair. I'll put it below so you can see it. Um, yeah, they're a small family run business and essentially like their, their yarns are always unique. So they only produce small batches of a particular colorway and then they don't create that colorway again. So you kind of get a very small window to, to actually, um, get a chance to, to snake up some of that, that colorway. So, or even that mixture of fiber, cause what they're doing is they're taking fibers from sheep um, in Sweden and kind of mixing them together. So you're get, always getting a different blend and yeah, it's just very unique and I've seen some gorgeous makes with it. So yeah, I'm excited to figure out what I'm going to make with these. Um, so yeah, now I'll go into how I managed for those who are interested, how I managed to get my hands on some. So what I did was, um, basically I liken it to purchasing, if you've ever done this, purchasing concert tickets online and you want the best seats. So it's kind of like that. So you want to do your research ahead of time. Firstly, you want to figure out what colors you're going to go for, how much you're going to need of it. And they do have a limit. I think you're only allowed to purchase up to two kilograms worth of, of their yarn in one order. Otherwise you have to start over and do another order. So, um, and your chances of getting a second order in probably are very slim. So, yeah, do your do your research ahead of time, figure out what colors you're going for and how much of each you're going to need to purchase. Um, they come in, I think they're called 100 gram plates. So you can buy them as a 100 gram plate, 300 gram bag or 500 gram bag. So, yeah, so decide what you want figure out the time difference for the update. So for me, it was literally midnight um, was, was going to be the shop update when it went live. So what I did was I, I already had a PayPal account. You'd want to set up your account right away too, before, like beforehand, you could do that at any time before the shop update. So go into their website, set up your account, make sure everything's, your shipping information's all in there. Everything's done. So you don't have to fumble with it at checkout because what happens is you can put your yarn in your cart and then you go to checkout and you have to fill in all this information if you haven't done it ahead of time and by the time you go to checkout people could have already bought the yarn that you were trying to get so yeah do all that stuff ahead of time set up your account set up your paypal if you're going to do paypal make sure everything's like one click ready to go sorry i got some fuzz in my eye <laughs> and uh yeah and then at about 11:55 p.m. So right before midnight, I just went on their website and kept hitting reflect, refresh, refresh, refresh until until their uh, the shop went live. And then as soon as it went live, I just I knew what I wanted because I figured out what colors I wanted already. And I went through them in my cart, checked out immediately. It literally took me two minutes. I came back to look and um, this color was sold out <laughs> like that's how quick two minutes two minutes there were other colors available still but that color and there was a gray that sold out immediately so so anyways that's how I did it the other option is um, as I've now learned they have a patreon that you can sign up for um, they only allow a certain number of people to keep it small and more community like um, but when you're a Patreon member, you do get first kind of first dibs on the sale. So I, I, I don't know how it works because I haven't done it yet. I did manage to get a, to sign up for their Patreon account because they were accepting new members in 
May something. Anyways, um, I think it's unfortunately it's closed now, but when the next one opens up, just keep your eye on it. If you're really interested and you're really like, if you're really struggling to get your hands on some yarn, that's another option. So they have different pay levels, uh, like tiers for the Patreon. And um, everyone, doesn't matter how much you pay, you still get the same um, benefits essentially. So not only do you get access to the, the sale uh, ahead of time, you get, you get to know what colors are coming. Um, you get access to... Uh, their um, they have youtube videos that they put up they're patreon only so you get to see behind the scenes you know the the how they've come up with the colors how they've come up with the different fiber mixtures um some of the knits that are being made out of the out of the yarns it's really really nice actually i really enjoy it. and i think is it Car carolyn i think her name's carolyn she has such a good eye like such a beautiful aesthetic everything is just it it's so um beautiful and you know she just i think she said she used to be a flower arranger for magazines or something like that so you could tell she's just she's got this beautiful eye for color <laughs> just amazing to watch her videos so yeah so that, that's all the advice I can give you, I guess, um, on how to get your hands on the new Tiden. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to swatching with it and seeing how that goes. I just, I think you have to have a lot of patience and I've heard you have to just take things slow and easy. Um, yeah, so that's, that's it for acquisitions. Um, one more thing I wanted to mention, it's not really an acquisition, but maybe it might be helpful to some of you. In the past, I was complaining about um, some of my skeins of yarn turning out really messy, and I was literally blaming it on the fiber type. <laughs> BFL got blamed for it. I don't know. They were all my BFLs seemed to turn out messy. Well, it turns out that it wasn't the BFL's fault. I don't think um, because my merino was starting to come out messy too, and it turns out it was my ball winder. So I will put in a link to a blog post that I used to fix. It was super easy to fix my ball winder. Um, and hopefully if like I, if the, I would assume it would be relevant to most ball winders. Um, if you're noticing your cakes are super messy and wobbly, I'll put a picture in of the cake that I wound before I fixed my ball winder and then the cake I wound after. And you can see the difference. Um, so yeah, uh, if you're noticing the same issue, you may want to look at fixing your ball winder. And like I said, it's super easy. You just have to take it apart and kind of, I don't know, for mine, I just have to fix one little piece and now it's it's working wonderfully. I imagine I'll have to do it again at some point. I have a Knit Picks ball winder, so it wasn't a very, like it wasn't an expensive one or anything like that. Um, it's all plastic parts and I think that's the problem. They kind of jostle around in there. But anyways, yeah, I just thought I'd mention that in case it might be helpful to, to some of you. And if you're blaming your yarn, <laughs> like I was, poor BFL. <laughs> uh, okay, so yeah, that's, that is literally it, for, I think, for all the crafting talk. Um, in books, I finally finished the book I was reading called Fugitive Pieces by Ann Michaels. It was fantastic. There were definitely points in the book where I was teary eyed. I'm not going to lie. It was it was just beautiful. Her writing style is just absolutely beautiful. And uh, after I read like after I got through the book, you know, sometimes at the end, there'll be like a little blurb about the author. I discovered that she before she wrote that book, she had already published several uh, books of poetry. And it really shows her her prose is so poetic and beautiful. And anyways, highly recommend great book. Um, so now I've moved on. I just started this book called Four Souls. It's by an author that is probably one of my absolute favorite authors, Louise Erdrich. She is an indigenous, American, American indigenous. Yes, she's from America. I think she's in Chicago. Now I don't remember. But anyways, yeah, I, I love her books. And she kind of has this, again, kind of poetic um, prose style and her books kind of almost all 
most of the ones that I've read tie into each other. So they're about a fictional family um, and some of the struggles, some of the some of the wonderful moments they go through. And yeah, um, they're all indigenous. You know what? Maybe I'll just read the I'll read this short little blurb so you can hear what it's about. It's okay. So a strange and compelling unkillable woman decides to leave home and the story begins. Fleur Pillager takes her mother's name, Four Souls, for strength and walks from her Ojibwe reservation to the cities of Minneapolis and St. Paul. She's seeking restitution from and revenge on the lumber baron who has stripped her reservation. But revenge is never simple, and she quickly finds her intentions complicated by her own dangerous compassion for the man who wronged her. The two narrators of Four Souls are from utterly different worlds. Nanapush, a smart man and a fool, is both Fleur's savior and her conscience. He tells Fleur's story and tells his own. He would like a calm and discriminating love with his sweetheart, Margaret. He is old and would like to face death with his love beside him. Instead, the two find themselves battling out their last years. When the childhood nemesis of Nanapush appears and casts his eye towards Margaret, Nanapush acts out an absurd revenge of his own and nearly ends up destroying everything. The other narrator, Polly Elizabeth Gein, is a pretentious and vulnerable upper crust fringe element, a hanger on in a wealthy Minneapolis family, a woman aware of her precarious hold on those around her. To her own great surprise, the entrance of Fleur Pillager into her household and her life affects a transformation she could never have predicted. So, yeah, sounds interesting for sure. Um, yeah, I, I do highly recommend Louise Erdrich. Um, like I mentioned, she she all of her stories about indigenous people. And um, I like how she combines kind of almost like a f folklore, folktale, kind of spiritual element to her stories. Um, yeah, highly recommend. Anyways, haven't read this one yet, but highly recommend her as an author. So that's what I'm reading. And in terms of life stuff, oh, we finally got our first COVID shot. Um, it's been over a week now. No side effects um, other than a sore, very sore arm the day after. Oh my gosh, my arm was killing me. I couldn't even lift it. It was very sore. Um, but yeah, so we're looking forward to getting that second one. It sounds like our government's pushing up our second doses here in Canada. So yeah, can't wait. Uh, what else? Um, I got a bike. So I've been biking with my daughter. Finally, I can bike. And my tailbone is still a little sore. Still a little sore. Cannot, I can't sit 100%. Um, like I can't, I can't sit back. It's really weird. Anyways, certain positions, still uncomfortable. But biking doesn't seem to hurt it, I think, because I'm leaning forward when I bike. Haven't been roller skating yet. Again, still waiting. I want to make sure I'm 100% um, good to go before I get back on those skates. And um, hmm, just trying to think what else. All the flowers are beautiful. My lupins all popped up all of a sudden and my irises. I feel like it's a bit early. When I look at my pictures from last year, we're like two weeks early in, in everything that's blooming. My flocks are blooming, which they bloomed at the end of summer last year. I don't know. I don't know what's going on but it looks beautiful anyways um what else hmm in terms of oh future knits i would i was watching 100 acre wool with bella and podcast and she is working on a yell cardigan by marie wallen and it's beautiful and i know she substituted her yarns um and i just saw i don't know if you guys are interested in marie wallen but she's doing a I think it's 10 or 20% off sale right now. So if you're interested, check that out. Um, I was eyeing her kits and trying to figure out if I wanted to get the hummingbird. Is it hummingbird? No, that's not what it's called. I can't remember. <laughs> there were two kits I was eyeing. And um, yeah, because they're just, they're gorgeous. I feel like they'd be definitely heirloom pieces. I want to do, I'm getting this urge and I think it's because I'm seeing other people do this. Um, November Woods, Alexandra, November Woods Crafting Podcast. She is working on this gorgeous cabled sweater. Um, 
And that's an heirloom piece for sure. And I am just getting that itch to, to do something that's going to take a long time. That I'm going to have to invest a lot of time in. That's going to take a lot of thought. But in the end is going to be just one of those pieces you cherish and, and pass along in your family. So yeah, I've got my eye on a few things. Uh, cabled sweater and a Marie Wallen pattern. I'd really love to try a Sidsel Hoivik pattern as well. Um, she has kits too, so I might look into that. Anyways, I think that's about it for now. I think I'll leave it there. Um, like I said, I'll pop in a slideshow of, of some of the finished objects from our make along. And um, yeah, I'll see you all guys. I'll, <laughs> I'll see you all in three weeks. Take care. Bye. Il y a si longtemps déjà J'ai oublié comment Tant de mots, de moments Pensés depuis longtemps Devant ce mur muet Faut chercher autrement Des photos, des regrets Pour que ça nous revienne Il y a des jours et des nuits Qui passent en paravent 